Welcome. Welcome to the seminar on the UC Berkeley Product Development Program. This is an information webinar session. We'll talk about the program and what you might can expect as a, pro, a prospective student. Uh, my name is Keith Alexander. I'll do a bit more introduction, but also with us is Alethea Stolfitz, who is our uh, graduate student assistant in the program, and Sydney Ruff, class of 21 product development program. Uh, Sydney is currently a, working at Procter & Gamble in their venture unit, new ventures unit. So again, let's go ahead and start and we'll begin. Proper introduction of myself, I'm the executive director of the product development program. I founded the program 15 years ago now uh, at UC Berkeley. Prior to returning to UC Berkeley, where I earned my PhD and bachelor's degree in chemical engineering, I've worked in the uh, private sector for 20 or so years, primarily as a consultant, at, at first at McKinsey & Company, and then later at CH Toom Hill, which is a uh, infrastructure construction company that had a consulting unit. I also have an MBA from Stanford University. So we'll answer some key questions about the PDP, talk about the program cost and requirements, and get into how it apply and take your questions. So what is the PDP? The PDP represents a hybrid choice on the graduate school choice space. It is both a combination of business and technical uh, content in its curriculum. Uh, it focuses on real world practices. It's a one year, nine and a half month or so program. It's a non-thesis master's. That means it's not a research, traditional research master's degree. It's a professional degree. And I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. It's a coursework plus what we call the field project, which I'll also talk about. The typical applicants tend to be people in chemical engineering or related disciplines, chemistry, biochemistry, et cetera. We've had 322 students graduate with the PDP master's degree. And I'll talk about the alumni toward the end of this presentation. As I said, the PDP is a professional master's degree. Its learning objective really is the acquisition of skills and practical methods for application in professional practice, like law, like MBA, like uh, optometry. It's really meant to, pre to prepare you to go out and begin uh, professional life right away. The PDP master's of science degree, it's a master of science in chemical engineering with a concentration in product development but other degrees with this kind of um, profile, the Master's of Engineering, and the, obviously the Master of Business Administration. Most people uh, leave the PDP and go straight into uh, professional life. Therefore, it is a typically a terminal degree that it is the last degree people take like law, like MBA and the, and the rest. Our applicants and class structure is really quite diverse of the PDP. This is from a, a class not too long ago, a breakdown of uh, where they come from. Our students have citizenship from around the world. Uh, this is one of the uh, real uh, somewhat uh, not talked about sort of advantages of the PDP is that you get to visit and work with students from around the world and understand their perspectives, not only on schoolwork, but on overall professional life and the like. The incoming class this year is no different than uh, all, just about all of our other classes. Our classes tend to be something like 60 to 70% international. That is the citizenship was international, although most of them did their undergraduate work in the US. Oops, got a flip here. 24% uh, US citizen who are California residents, and then the rest are non-resident US citizens. Uh, we're proud to tell you that this year's class has 58% women, so it's dominated by women. And 67% of our undergrad of our class, incoming class, uh, did their undergraduate college at uh, a UC uh, university. With such a diverse group, you might wonder what these folks have in common. They do have quite a bit in common. In fact, they develop very cohesive uh, class groups uh, each year. Uh, they are inquisitive about what they can do with their technical background. They're really ready to try something new, to go beyond the usual pathways, career pathways defined by chemical engineering or chemistry or some other discipline. And they're prepared to take on a little risk in doing that because those pathways aren't uh, uh, heavily traveled. 
Uh, they're, they're not highly risky, but they are not heavily traveled. And so you are taking on a little risk as you think about something different to do with your chemistry, chemical engineering, or other technical background. They also share an interest in retaining a, a touch with technology. They don't want to be strictly business. They don't want to go entirely into a business or a, a different kind of degree that separates them from technology. Our program is unique in that it focuses on these kinds of technologies, almost all of which require, or at least a benefit from, some knowledge of chemistry and chemical engineering principles. Our students also want career mobility, even if it uh, doesn't begin right at the beginning of their careers. If you look about companies, they might be divided in a generic sense to both the process side, where there's operations, process, product, product control, and the like, and the product side, product development, R&D, marketing, sales, and those kinds of function at a very loose look at the companies. Most engineers start their career on the process side and, and develop a reputation and the like. And they may have some intention to move to the product side over some point in their career. They have potential for real contribution. We try to create a profile and framework that enables them to make this transition, if not at the beginning of their careers, then later on soon after they've begun their careers. They also want the, uh, the training to last in a fairly compact time frame, and we have that. We offer our program in a nine and a half month time frame. You arrive in late August. And the first semester begins. During that first semester, you're taking classes, both mandatory and elective courses. And you're also being prepared for the field project, which will be delivered in the spring semester. In the spring semester, as I said, you're doing the field project. And we can tell you on the first day you arrive what your graduation day will be. Uh, this is one of the aspects of the program. It's a finite, compact time frame, although it does present some challenges in terms of the amount of work you have to done, do in the time that's available. So people arrive in orientation. This is a recent class arriving in orientation in late August 2017 in this case, and they graduate nine and a half months later uh, like this. This is the same class, uh, just nine and a half months later graduating. So what can I expect as a PDP student? Our program has three major components. There are as a two semester sequence of core development courses that are mandatory for all students. Students must choose an area of industry specialization, biotech, advanced materials, consumer products, new ventures, alternative energy, there are a couple of more, these are examples. Where they select elective courses, and third, they must actually conclude a uh, complete a field project, a PDP field project, which is mandatory. It's a team project, field project exercise related to technology commercialization or product development. And I'll talk more about that in just a moment. So three components. We teach our curriculum really around these three, three uh, anchor um, ideas. Got to go back, excuse me. Innovation product adoption and risk management. These turn out to be the themes through the two semester sequence courses, 295P and 295Q. Our coursework covers all of these topics, 295P, 295Q, and our course components are lectures, excuse me, industry speakers, which is really important because we're getting real world uh, experiences brought into the classroom. And we use case studies, which are typically uh, stories or narratives where there is some dilemma of some kind related to product development and technology commercialization. We found this to be an effective way to teach. They use that same approach in law school and also in business school. This is an example of a representative schedule for someone choosing the biotechnology specialization option. The courses on the left, those there in the blue, are all mandatory courses that everyone has to take. Introduction to new product development and preparation of the field practice. And then in the springs, advanced topics and new product development and the field project itself, the actual delivery, working with clients on field project. In the right-hand column are the elective courses that students choose from an approved list of uh, potential elective courses uh, by industry specialization. And that's where the real difference occurs. You as a student make those choices from an approved list that we uh, provide you. 
So this is the biotechnology specialization. You see quite a bit in molecular cell biology, public health, and other places. This is the microelectronic or advanced materials specialization. Again, the left side is the same. The right side is different. You see much more work in the material science area, for instance, as well as mechanical engineering in terms of elective courses. These is the new ventures specialization for people who want to work in uh, small startup companies or who, in fact, want to enter uh, the financial end, the venture capital end of, the, of, uh, of a professional life. And you can see many of the courses come from the MBA school, which you're allowed to take some uh, courses from the MBA, Haas MBA school, and also from industrial engineering and operations research, which has a lot of materials related to new ventures in that particular department. And then lastly, here's an alternative energy specialization example. Uh, we have a robust energy related uh, community on the Berkeley campus, and there are, are a range of elective courses around energy uh, that one can take for this specialization. Consumer products is another significant area, like Procter & Gamble, for instance, as a, as a company. And so there are a lot of companies, a lot of uh, elective courses here on the, on the right-hand side that relate in one way or another to some of the challenges faced by the consumer product industry. So those are the elective courses by industry specialization. The third component is the field project teams. Uh, in the, in the uh, fall semester, we teach you a project delivery methodology that we use in the spring semester, where typically three students are uh, assigned to a local, typically local industry client to work on some problem related to product development and or technology commercialization. Uh, most of our students tell us that this is one of the favorite parts of the entire program. Students get to go out and practice what they've been learning in classrooms and their electric courses, as well as in the, uh, in the uh, mandatory courses. And they serve really as consultants around some agreed upon problem with the client uh, that we've identified for each team uh, to solve that problem and experience, simulate a professional uh, experience of actually producing something of value to someone you don't know well and meeting their expectations. This is meant to simulate professional life. Our field projects, we've done over a hundred of these over the past, over the years. Uh, they range all over the place, but they all include some topic related to technology commercialization or product development. Here are just a few clients we've had in the past. Uh, the client Boston Scientific had invented something called a detachable medical, uh, medical coil. And it actually dominated that market with 90% share, but they'd been losing share for a few years and they want our team to evaluate why they were losing market share. And it had to do uh, really with a connection with key doctors uh, in that particular area that, that uh, needed to be made aware of the advantages of Boston Scientific's uh, technology versus some others. And then there are other questions like that. All of the projects have a bit of ambiguity to them purposely because in professional life, things rarely come to you completely defined. And so we want our students to go through a definition stage with the client to really simulate what professional life is like. Graduate division requirements for the degree, uh, there are 24 units in the upper division. Our program uh, is what the graduate division requires. Our program though has a requirement of 28 units over two semesters, that's 14 units a semester. The 12 units uh, that have to be in chemical engineering are, are, are in included in the mandatory uh, courses, 295P and 295Q, and in the field project. So that is already covered. You can take additional chemical engineering courses, but this requirement is covered by the structure of our program. And then there's a GPA requirement, of course, and final comprehensive examination really is the eight final exam in 295Q, and the defense of the field project really is your pro a progress review, which we'll talk about in a moment. So what are PTP graduates doing now? Well, we think about the holistic challenge that PDP graduates have, not only learning about product development, but also managing a career over the next 20, 30, 40 years. And so we actually teach, include in our, our uh, curriculum, uh, the notion of career development and managing career development from a professional perspective. That includes preparation and being ready with all of the right materials 
to go to, uh, to the market with, so to speak, developing leads on jobs, not merely relying on uh, job boards and the like, but actually actively developing leads on job. And I'll talk about the alumni's role in that. And then really figuring out how to close the deal, uh, how to actually interview and how to actually select and, uh, and get started in that first 90 days on the job. It's meant to provide you with a set of skills that will serve you well beyond uh, your time in the PDP. This is a partial list of some of the placements of PDP graduate students. You'll notice companies that are typical for chemical engineers and chemists, but some that are not so typical, like Amazon, like Bloomberg Financial, like Facebook and Flextronics and Foxconn, oops, excuse me, and Foxconn, and the consulting companies, McKinsey and Company, Navigant Consulting, Nexton Consulting. We do really open up a range of opportunities not available to the uh, typical graduate in the chemical sciences. One of the uh, opportunities we are able, been able to create for our students is uh, success in, in achieving these corporate rotational uh, leadership development programs that are hosted by a range of usually typically large companies. These programs were designed many years ago, really aimed at MBA students exclusively. And they are programs where you are brought in as a class into a particular company like Intel or Anheuser-Busch, and you're given a senior manager in the corporation to be your mentor from the beginning. You take training with that class and you're advanced through the company. You actually do a rotation over two years, typically six months in four jobs. And then you're asked, where do you wanna start your career? It's really meant to give you a steep trajectory towards senior management. And our students have been very successful at actually breaking through along with the MBAs and getting into these programs. The yellow indicates uh, sort of where we placed, you know, several uh, PDP graduates in these rotational programs. As I said, we have a substantial alumni base, 322 students that are out there at this point. That includes the class of 2021, I might mention. 222 students and they alumni, and they are willing and able to help you any way they can in terms of providing you counsel of how you conduct your job search, providing you a line of sight on any job openings that may be opening up in their, com in their company or in their industry. Uh, they are a true resource to you as a graduate of the PDP. A couple of stories to close here. The PDP is a good choice when you wanna change industries and careers. This, Jill was a student in our, one of our early classes. She was working in uh, Colorado on inkjet uh, uh, technology, actually developing formulas for inkjet printers and the like, and you know, found that interesting work, but wanted to shift into biotechnology and called me one day and asked, did I think our coursework would actually let her develop a profile that would you know, allow her to make a transition from what she was doing into biotech. Well, long story short, she is a senior manager now, well beyond the senior research associate too at Gilead Sciences right here. She's been there for probably almost 14 years at this point as a senior person is very happy with the choice she made in terms of coming to the PDP and making the shift to Gilead. Tony Kujesfahani uh, was already in biotechnology. She was working at a local company, a big, a big company. And she was doing very well as an engineer, she's a chemical engineer. So well, in fact, that they wouldn't consider her as a candidate for jobs on the product side of the company. And things like product development and mergers and acquisitions and other things like that. She's somewhat frustrated, highly regarded. She also called me and asked, could, she, uh, could the PDP help reprofile who she, what she looks like and make her um, available to a number of range of jobs? She came, she was one of the people who uh, were hired into Baxter's healthcare rotational program. She was the first PDP student, in fact, to crack that particular ceiling and get into those program and, and lead a bunch of other people. And she has uh, developed a healthy career in manufacturing engineering. She's now actually the uh, chief operating officer of a different company, uh, having left Baxter, um, still based on you know, the kind of things she learned in the PDP and in the rotational program at Baxter Healthcare. So how much did the program cost? Well, this is a recent cost. This isn't done this year, but it's not that far away. It's less than 5% difference this year. And the cost is, is dependent, as you might imagine, on whether you're a California resident or a non-resident. 
the cost to the PDP, which is the PDST, Professional Degree Supplemental Tuition, you see at the bottom, is the same, whether you're a California resident or non-resident. That's the cost you pay to be in the PDP. The other cost on top are the university fees, and they differ for California residents and non-residents. This is a return on investment decision. You have to decide that is, is opening up the uh, new avenues, new careers, new opportunities uh, worth the investment that you'll be making. I'd also say one other thing about this uh, is that don't let this be the reason you don't come to the PDP. Talk to us about, we have some ability to offer financial aid, uh, some substantial financial aid, and there are GSI positions, graduate student instructor positions, which give tremendous financial incentive on that top part, on that stuff that goes to the uh, university itself in terms of reducing uh, the burden that, that's there. Don't let this be the reason you not go without talking to us. Okay. This just shows that our, our fees are really commensurate with both public and private institutions. The regions of the university make us compare ourselves to other programs offering you know, things that are of a similar nature. And we're right there with, with everyone else in terms of what is being charged for this, uh, for this program. A little bit of new information. This is 98 PDP alumni, something we did earlier this year. We did a salary uh, survey. 81% make at least 75% and 53% make at least 100,000 K per year. Most of these out in probably less than five years, okay? Less than five years. So I've not had people complain that they didn't have the salary to um, deal with the loans they might have had to take or the financial burdens they might have otherwise come on uh, as a result of coming to the PDP. So how do you apply to the PDP? Well, it's all online. You review information at our PDP website. If you choose, you can call me and we can talk, uh, make an appointment, Zoom or phone, either one. You, your application really is identical to those for the traditional MS PhD degree here at Berkeley. We ask that you fill out that application, label your statement of purpose, MS product development, so we don't miss yours. It doesn't get lost in the shuffle with traditional MS or PhD degrees. Focus your statement on the purpose and ration, on, a purpose on rationale for the PDP. Why do you choose the PDP? We want to make certain that you know and understand the choice you're making. Uh, you're making a non-traditional choice, a professional degree choice. Uh, you can let me know that you've actually sent this in. Applications, applications are available online. The deadline is Friday, uh, January 7th, 2022. And we will have an answer to you no later than February 18th, 2022. Okay, Just a little over a month, we'll have an answer in terms of your admittance. And again, uh, you know, let's talk about any concerns you might have. Uh, once you're, you're admitted or not, uh, about financial questions, and sometimes we have remedies that we can we can work out. Well, the PDP is over the 15 years has proven its way as a way of expanding the range of opportunities and providing career mobility uh, for its graduates, particularly those uh, who come out with um, you know backgrounds in the chemical sciences and want to take a non-traditional path to building a career. I should mention it's not in our program here, but we've had oh, probably four or five student start companies on their own. Three or four of them have been actually funded in Series A funding. Uh, so that is another pathway that is not uh, uh, obvious from this presentation, but actually does happen as well. Well, got to put it in here. Got to have the slide. Go Bears. And now we will take whatever questions you might have if there are questions, uh, Alethea, that I can answer. Looks like we don't have any in the chat yet. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to just type them in the chat and we will answer it. Otherwise, uh, maybe we can have Sydney just speak for a little bit on her experience until we have some Yeah, questions. Yeah, that, that's, uh, let's do that, let's do that. So um, did you did you have a series of questions or we're gonna let Sydney just sort of talk about her experience, Alethea? No, we can just let her talk. Okay, great. Okay, hi everybody. My name is Sydney Ruff. So I was a graduate of this program last year. So class of 21, um, just graduated in May. And of course I kind of knew coming out of undergrad, 
that I want to focus on consumer products um, and consumer products R&D, but the undergraduate institution that I went to, I didn't really get a good background in consumer products R&D. Um, everything that I had learned was mostly from my internships and co-ops, and I really wanted to get a better background in that area and also want to make sure that I could get a job in that area. So that's kind of where PDP came in into where it was a program that allowed me to focus on um, an industry that I really liked, get to learn all about new product development innovation, and also get to learn a little bit of the business aspect of things that I noticed was pretty important during my internship and co-op experiences. Um, so, of course, like he said, this is a very short program. You get a lot done in a short amount of time. Um, I really enjoyed the program and being able to pick the coursework that I got to take. So, of course, there are a couple of classes that you have to take. Um, they're mandatory, but the rest of your classes are up to you. So, you really get to choose and pick and craft your educational experience, which is one thing that I really, really loved. Um, and of course, here I am now, I am working as an associate scientist at Procter & Gamble. So in the industry that I want to work in, and like Keith briefly mentioned earlier, um, I'm in PNG Ventures. So that's kind of like the startup arm of PNG. Um, so what we do in my area is kind of work on brands that don't exactly fit PNG's current business model, um, but areas that they might want to get into. So my project in particular um, is working with a beauty device. I actually have a cup from our brands called Opte. Um, it's currently on the market. And our, like the device that I work on is like a precision beauty device is what they would call it. So it actually prints makeup on specific spots um that you need the makeup so you get to do a lot of cool things um, while you're in the program but also get to do a lot of cool things coming out of the program because everyone is always impressed by the quality of education we get from this program great we, we welcome questions from either i or sydney uh, from any of the folks who are on the call if you have questions, you can just type it into the to the to the chat box looks like we've sydney, got one question, Keith, maybe Go we can ahead. ask that first. Um, so one question, um, someone's asking if it's possible to apply for the program part-time. We don't have a part-time option. Uh, you know, the nine months is pretty compact. Uh, even a GSI job, that is a job on campus, you know, has to be managed carefully uh, because you have to compile enough units, that is 28 units over two semesters fairly quickly. You know, I've had one or two people uh, work, but it is a real stress, uh, particularly if, to, if you have to commute to another place. So we don't have a part-time or a, or a uh, evening option. It is something we've thought about in the past, but it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't fit into this current model. Great, and then we've got one more question. Um, so this person is interested in pursuing the PhD in chemical engineering, but they're also very interested in the industry applications as well. So if they do the PhD, could they still take courses from the PDP program? We do admit uh, to our mandatory courses, you know, most of the courses in the PDP program are elective courses. The only required courses are P 295P and 295Q, the two semester sequence. And occasionally a PhD student uh, within our department, within our college, I should say, you know, will ask to be included in the class and we try to accommodate them uh, for that reason. Great, so that's all the questions that we had for now. I think you were gonna ask Sydney something, so go ahead. <laughs> uh, Sydney, if you had to, um, other than my courses, of course, you had to point <laughs> to a favorite course. What would you, what would you point to? Ooh, so I would say, yeah, my favorite class was probably outside of like our main ones was opportunity recognition. Oh um, yeah, it's a good yeah. course in the MBA program. So that is taught um, in the spring and in the fall semester. And that class really focuses on, you know, new and innovative ideas and how those are developed and just looking at kind of, I guess you would say like the state of things in the Bay Area. So we looked at a lot of different startups and companies that were began in the Bay Area. We focused on a lot of um, case studies and how Keith mentioned earlier, our program also focused on case studies. 
there are a couple of times that we had either read the case study in Keith's class and then went over it in opportunity recognition, <laughs> or we had already read it in opportunity recognition and were like prepared for Keith's class. Um, but that class was just really fun. The professor, Dr. Isaacs, is great. Um, he's just like, you can tell he's really, really passionate about what he teaches about um, and just knows a lot about the state of um, startup companies in the Bay Area. So I would say that was probably one of my favorite classes. I didn't like that it was taught on a Saturday, but it was pretty fun that I kind of kind of got past that. <laughs> well, you, you miss your Saturday morning cartoons? I mean, I know it was Saturday morning. <laughs> <laughs> Drew Isaacs is one of the best teachers I've ever seen, and flat out. He's a friend of mine, but he's also, and he loves PDP students. He actually wrote me a nice email about your class, in fact. He wrote me a nice email about your class, said how much you guys ask questions and the like. Uh, we got a question in the, in, this, in, the, um, in the chat box. This is a separate program from the Masters of Engineering program. The Masters of Engineering program um, is a is a product of the College of Engineering. Uh, the chemical engineering department at Berkeley is in the College of Chemistry. It's an unusual arrangement. Only three colleges in the United States have this arrangement. Uh, 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 Caltech, University of Illinois, and Berkeley, where the chemistry and chemical engineering departments are, are uh, well, the chemical engineering department is not in the College of Engineering. The Masters of Engineering program is a different program, really aimed at the disciplines that are there, mechanical engineering, uh, electrical engineering, uh, civil, et cetera. And you know, they take a distinctly disciplined approach. That is, they are organized by discipline, electrical, mechanical, nuclear, et cetera, et cetera. Our approach is much more, um, you know, less tied to chemical engineering and more to the overall practice, whatever you happen to be doing, uh, then linked to a, to, a, to a specific discipline. So that's a separate application. Um, it is, we do have some people who are in chemistry who go over there because they don't, they're looking for the chemical engineering department and it's not in engineering. Uh, it's not in where it's supposed to be and it's over here, but uh, they are a completely separate uh, degree. Any other questions? I mean, we, we, we didn't. Okay, sounds good. Thank you for the clarity. Okay, great. Anyone, thank you, Travis. Anyone else? Any other questions you have about living? If you're not living in Berkeley now, what's what is life like in Berkeley? Anything at all? Well, it sounds like we've reached the uh, the limit here, uh, Alethea. And uh, you know, perhaps we ought to just uh, simply indicate that we're we're available to talk with you about uh, your plans for graduate school. Um, you know, one of the best parts I would tell you is just joining this alumni body, like you you met here today with Sydney. Uh, it's amazing just how all 322 of them are, you know, enthusiastic boosters of this program, and really are kind of a real hidden benefit that you don't know about until you actually join uh, the PDP and find out about all of these marvelous people. So we wish you well in your graduate uh, search. Uh, you've if you've got further questions, Alethea has put on you know, her email address. I'd be happy to answer any questions uh, you might have as well. And uh, we'll clear up anything that really may be holding you back in terms of moving forward on your application. Um, thanks so much for the time. I wanna thank Sydney Ruff again for pitching in for us. You did a marvelous job. Mm -hmm. uh, best of luck out there at, uh, at P&G when I hear the great things you're doing. And Alethea, thanks so much for getting this, this all organized. And we'll bring, it, we'll bring it to a close. Contact us if there are other questions. We will answer them promptly, OK? OK, everybody, have a great afternoon. All right, thanks, thanks a lot. Fun. Thanks, Sydney.